Hi, everybody. I'm DJ Sixsmith. Welcome to Sit Down. Stephen Pasquale is here with us. The Call Me Rule coming to Showtime. It's going to be a good one. Stephen, what's up, man? How are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me. So this is a really important show for a number of different reasons. We are living through a, a crazy Trump administration. It seems like every single day there's stuff going on. And specifically when it comes to James Comey and Peter Strzok and President Trump, there is a lot to digest. So what was it like jumping into this show? Well, it was really, it felt really important. Um, and, you know, we're really proud of it. It's a, a look inside the insane pressure cooker that was the FBI during the 2016 election on the heels of the Hillary Clinton email investigation and the crossfire hurricane investigation, which was the, the Russian meddling. And um, it's a really great, insightful look into how crazy that was for those great and patriotic American men and women who work at the FBI, which was once an apolitical organization, trying to do the right thing in the face of emerging fascism in America. This was obviously a very public story when it was happening, but there are many different layers to it. So when you were doing the research for this part, what did you learn about it and what did you specifically want to focus on? <clears throat> well, Peter Strzok and Lisa Page have been so vilified by this playground bully and his enablers that my heart very much went out to them. I think to have them smeared summarily and dismissed and discredited and fired and resigned as if they were some sort of awful, evil bad guys and all this because they were sleeping together. The staggering hypocrisy of that from a party defending a lifelong self-admitted sexual predator is jaw-dropping and history will not have the words to describe it. Peter Strzok recently came out with a book, so he stays in the news here. What was it like just learning about his story and even just following up with him, you know, all these later, seeing what he's up to? I've got, I got the book. I can't wait to read it. I think Peter Strzok is one of the most unsung heroes in all of this. He is a decorated, uh, decades-long patriot of this country, a public servant, not making millions of dollars a year, trying to put bad guys in jail. What, do you, what, do you, what, do you, what does a person do when a career criminal and lifelong con man finds his way with the help of the Russians in the White House, yeah, you're going to say to the person you're sleeping with, oh, shit, this is going to be really hard. That's what you're going to say if we're all functioning adults. Right. So yeah, it, this guy's been like somehow discredited, like he can't do his job because he spoke a truth is absurd. And it overshadows everything that he once did and who he was previously. And, you know, you speak to that, but it's just amazing how all that's been lost in translation. Yeah, I mean, like, what, what, you know, we're, this is America. We're allowed to be, we're allowed to have political feelings outside of our workplace, and it doesn't affect our work. We're allowed to do that in America. But Donald Trump and his enablers don't think for a second they would rather govern America as Putin governs, governs Russia. Don't for a second think that, where you could silence your critics, jail your, your critics, assassinate the people that you find to be a thorn in your side. If you don't think this president would choose that over this, you have not been paying attention. The show will definitely highlight a lot of those things that you mentioned here. When it comes to James Comey, we're going to see Jeff Daniels play him. And, you know, Jeff Daniels is one of the best out there. So what was it like just watching him do his thing? And, you know, what should people expect when they check it out? You know, it's funny. When you get to work with, like, a giant in the acting world, you never know what to expect. Sometimes it's, it's very disappointing. Other times it's thrilling. And I didn't know what to expect from Jeff. And he was amazing. He was laser focused. He had an enormous amount of material that your average actor would not even be able to wrap their mouth around, much less memorize every day and nail every take. Jeff is a classic, great American theater actor, um, which is why he's so great in movies. I mean, you are somebody that has to appreciate the theater background there too, right? Oh man, yeah. I mean, I'd live my life on stage if I could afford it. <laughs> <laughs> Showtime obviously has done some really great stuff. Why do you think this show is so important right now, especially with the election less than two months away? Well, you know, as we were saying before, it's, a, it's an information war right now. And I work really hard to stay informed. And um, tuning into the Comey rule will give you some real insight into the whole James Comey decision-making tree and the hard conversations he had with his radically competent top-level uh, FBI team with regard to the Hillary Clinton email investigation and the Russian meddling. 
Um, so, you know, if you want to really feel like you're in the know, what it was like to be in those rooms, that's what this movie's going to provide you. Have your thoughts changed about anyone or anything in this situation, or does it just give you more of an appreciation for the people who may not get the shine in the same way? You know what? I'm a believer in the integrity of James Comey, and I know that's a controversial thing to say. I believe that his downfall is his own sense of his own personal decency. He didn't realize that he was operating in the, in the political climate that we're operating in. And he's got disdain from people on the left and disdain from people on the right. And that's a really hard position to be in. But he was the def is the definition of a an apolitical operator within the FBI. And if the FBI is not an apolitical organization, uh, we're, in for, we're in real trouble. And, and Trump and his administration are of course tr doing everything they can to make it you know, something that's not an apolitical organization. It's kind of crazy to wind it back and think about everything that happened with Comey to writing the book, to the book turning into a show, to now it coming on TV. Like you couldn't yeah. have really thought about that timeline three years ago. It's insane. Yeah, it's really fun to be a part of something that is like just timely as hell. You know what I mean? That actually might put, it, put its finger on the scale a little bit and help people understand. Well, speaking of how the media can skew things, you have played real life people before. You played Mark Furman and the O.J. Right. Simpson trial was one of the most important landmark cases in our history. What was it like preparing for that and just being in that series? Well, I was, uh, that was 93 O.J. Simpson, right? So I was like 16. That was, the, that was really the beginning, if you remember, of what reality TV was just the insane amount of obsession we had nationally with him and that case. Um, I, I'm a big Ryan Murphy fan. I think he's got the pulse on the, on his, on the, on the, on the country of what the kind of TV we want to watch. I knew it would be good. The scripts were really good. Um, and what can you say? OJ's one, OJ's the guiltiest murderer of all time, but he got off because of Mark Furman and the racism within the uh, LAPD. Yeah, and there was so much to Furman's story. And, and think about when, when that series comes out, it's, it's a decade and a half plus later, and there's still so much buzz and interest, very similar to the Comey rule. There will always be interest in these cases. So what does it mean to, to play a small role in, in telling those stories all throughout time? I mean, I think I, I like the added bit of pressure playing a real person feels like. The difference is, you know, Mark, Mark Furman, you know, ruined the O.J. Simpson trial with his racism. And Peter Strzok is a decades long public servant and patriot. So they couldn't be on, they couldn't be on, on more opposite sides in terms of yeah. how they are for the country. It certainly shows your range. And it also shows just the growth in TV, like thinking about when you did Rescue Me, like where the industry was to, to where it's at now. Like it must be pretty crazy for you to think about what, what stands out the most to you just about how things have evolved. Oh man, it's, it's an awesome conversation. I mean, could we, could we have an hour? I wish we did. <laughs> because Rescue Me was, I believe The Shield was FX's first like really gritty uh, scripted program and then Rescue Me. Or maybe there was another one in there, Nip Tuck. So we were number right. three. And now FX is making some of the best TV in the world. They've got like 100 shows. And there's, last year there were 437 scripted television shows because of all these streaming networks. The best work in the world right now is happening in the television landscape. Movies are, are a dying art. They're either huge or small. There's no such thing as a mid-sized movie anymore. So, so many of our great writer, directors, actors, designers want to, want to be in the TV landscape where you've got the freedom to tell, you know, character-driven stories. How much are you missing theater right now? Oh, man, I miss it a lot. We were in the middle of reviving a uh, Stephen Sondheim musical called Assassin, which is a masterpiece. Uh, and we were just about to enter the theater and get ready to start performing it when we shut down. So. Hopefully we'll get back to doing that um, the minute we get the go button. But we may need a new administration who takes sides seriously before we actually have a chance to really get ahead of this virus, which is the greatest failure in American leadership maybe ever.